Good morning. My name is Michael Hayes. I am and want to introduce myself and the program that I'm going to be delivering in four lectures. I've been an independent consultant in Washington, D.C. for two decades, mainly in defense, energy, and environment. I've been a teacher of English intermittently for 45 years, both in public and private schools, at the high school and college level. I've been an independent scholar ever since I got my PhD at the University of Michigan in 1973, which means I have written conference papers, published articles, and a book. The four meetings concern the, will address the issue raised in my book, which is the um, nature of Shakespeare's four greatest plays regarded as tragedies, but which I think are better understood as tragic romances. When we think about the genre tragedy, we tend to think about the protagonist and the decline and death of this one person. And then we reflect upon the sorry state of mankind. But the protagonist is only one part of the play. What are we going to make of the other characters? And what are we going to make of the play as a whole? Does it matter? And I think it does to the understanding of these plays that Malcolm follows Macbeth, that Fortinbras follows Hamlet, Cassio follows Othello, Edgar follows King Lear. Or put it this way, since many of you have read Hamlet, why doesn't Horatio succeed Hamlet? Why does Fortinbras, whom we've very rarely seen in the play, succeed him? The answer, I think, comes in part, at least, from the most popular literary tradition in Shakespeare's time, the, the tradition of chivalric romance, which is unknown or mocked by us, but was enjoyed throughout the population in his day. Why? What was its appeal? Why was it valued? And why might Shakespeare have turned to it in writing his great plays? In these four meetings, we'll address these questions. I want to hear from you and have your uh, responses to these plays. I'm going to provide some background information about the literary genres and this literary tradition. And I hope that when we're through, we'll have an additional understanding about how we approach genre it is not different from how we approach other people whom we do not know very well. Can we set them in a larger context to assist our understanding uh, of people, but also of plays. So, as far as I look at this series of meetings, it not only addresses aesthetic questions, but moral ones as well, and I hope you'll enjoy it with me. Thank you.